Hi, in this video we are going to see how to assign different custom data to the countries in our map and uh, save and load this data for future decisions. Um, we will be using the demo scene number 27 called UI input data save load example um, to cover these topics. Um, I hope you enjoyed this session. This sample is composed of a, a basic interface on the top in which uh, the user can select a country and once he, uh, he has selected the country an amount of resources will be shown here belonging to that country object. We will be able to edit that uh, value, that number and click update to save that number into that custom field for the ca selected country and ultimately we will be able to save that information to a file in our file system as well as uh, recover that information um, from the same file. The Canvas UI here contains uh, several fields. We have uh, the top panel which serves as a placeholder for all of these controls, the drop downs, the levels and the buttons. And there is a hidden info panel uh, which you can see here, which will be shown just when we are hovering the countries and will show the current resources for the country under the mouse cursor. So let's hide it for now. And this game logic script has uh, five public properties that uh, are wired to the different uh, Canvas UI elements. The country's drop-down, which is this, the resources input field, which is this one, and the info panel that we uh, I have shown you before, it's the, the hidden panel, and to direct uh, reference to the country label in that info panel and the resource uh, field in that info panel as well. So before entering into the code, let's see how this uh, demo scene works. As you can see, as I move my mouse over a country, the info panel gets visible and move next to the mouse pointer. The country label is shown in yellow and the current resources also are updated dynamically. I can also click on any country, for example, Venezuela or Spain and the drop-down list will be updated accordingly. I can select the country here, for example uh, China, and uh, I can uh, enter the number of or update uh, the value for the sources, for example. And we'll see how to draw over the countries as well. In this case, how to add a simple text object to the center of the country. Uh, I can uh, update this information. Every time I up click update, it's uh, refreshing the internal custom attributes for this country I, I am creating, and also refreshing the label, which is uh, attached to a game object, um, which is parented to the map. We'll see this in the code later. And finally, I can click save here which is, uh, in fact, uh, saving the information to a file uh, stored in the root of the assets uh, project called countries attributes. Here you can see in JSON format the different custom attributes I defined for the countries. This is the internal unique country ID. Very uh, useful just in case you change the names of the countries for any reason. So um, this will never change. You can change the name of the Spain, you know, the state, whatever, or translate them and uh, it, it, doesn't, it won't uh, matter. All right. This is the code behind uh, the game logic, C Sharp script, which is attached to this game object uh, in the scene. Here are the um, public um, attributes, which are wired to the uh, to the user interface. 
So the first thing I am doing in the start method is to get a reference to the world map strategy kit uh, API and store that reference in the map variable. Um, if you are confused about this uh, acronym, please uh, get, uh, take a look at the uh, first tutorial this introductory series um, if, because I am explaining the difference between the namespace required to use World Map Strategy Kit in your code and the main API class here. Okay. So the, the next thing I am doing is loading the country names from World Map Strategy Kit. Okay, and populate the drop down here. To load the, the, any data stored on the file system. So I am invoking directly the same function attached to this load event. It's called load button click. And uh, what I am doing is this simple and dirty code just for the sake of simplicity. I'm reading all the text information, the JSON uh, data from the file called countries attributes and uh, pass to this function of World Map Strategy Kit API set countries attributes data. Uh, this will replace any uh, country attribute uh, with the data I pass from this file, right? So the next thing I'm doing is uh, hooking this function to the event and country click. This function will refresh the selected value of the drop-down based on which country I'm clicking with the mouse. This is an event function which can accept three parameters. The first one is the country index clicked under the mouse pointers. The region index, this is because uh, a country can have different land regions. Okay, For instance, any country that has uh, many islands, each region will have an index as well and the button index in case uh, I want to differentiate uh, a click, a right click from a left click or whatever reason. For example, uh, I want to make the left click select one country and use the right click to show some uh, contextual information. So I get the country name using the, uh, the API get country, country index dot name. This is the field of the country object returned by the get country function. And assign this, this country name, convert to the index of the different elements on the list and assigning that index to the country dropdown dot value of the unity standard dropdown control. And finally, in order to to show the name I clear, the info panel next to the mouse pointer as I move the mouse around the map, I'm hooking this function called show tooltip to the event of mouse move. This function is receiving the map coordinates under the mouse pointer and passing these mouse coordinates directly to the get country function, which is very useful because it has different overloads. You can pass the country name, or the map position, or a country index, and it will return the country object. Okay, so if the country object is null, means that there is no country under the map position. So what I am doing is hiding the info panel, uh, moving away the screen. But if country is found under the mouse pointer, I'm updating the different fields on the info panel: uh, country name. I'm displaying the custom attribute resources. In this case, the custom attributes uh, is uh, contained inside a JSON object, which is a field of the uh, country object, right? Um, and position the panel on the screen under the mouse position plus a small offset so it does not obscure the mouse pointer, right? So uh, let's stop here a little bit and explain how can you define custom attributes, okay? In World Map Strategy Kit, you have either country objects or province objects or city objects or cell objects or mount point objects, okay? Um, uh, for now, we will focus on the country objects, right? A country object 
uh, has different fields like the center, the coordinate uh, of the center of the country on the map, uh, the custom attributes you can define, uh, the continent name the country belongs to, uh, the crossing cost in, for the pathfinding features. It has a lot of information that you can uh, learn uh, in the manual and uh, also it has several utility fields that most of the time you won't be using but could be useful in case you can customize to the extreme your game, right? So, um, in case that you want to assign the, a custom attribute for your country object, you have to really three options. The first option is to go uh, directly to the country definition class, which is located here in scripts, core entities, and open up the country script. And here you can find all of the country fields used by the warm up strategy kit. Many of them are public, or other are private, but here you can add your own fields, right? The problem to uh, this approach is that uh, whenever you update the world map strategy kit asset, you will lose that modification, right? So another option is because this class, country class, is modified by this, this special keyword of the C-sharp language. Partia class means that you can split the contents of a class file into different files. So effectively I can uh, create a different file called for example uh, country extensions or country attributes, um, duplicate this line inside the same namespace, right, and add different attributes here. Let's do a quick example because this is a nice feature of C Sharp. Create a new file called country extensions doesn't have to be inside the world map strategy key, uh, hierarchy. In fact, I don't recommend that because most of the time you will be removing the existing folder before updating to a new version. So please don't do this. Don't create your extensions here inside the world map strategy key folder. Move them outside in your own project structure, right? So uh, what I am doing is just duplicate this I need to respect the namespace, okay? So that's, that's it. Add any information I want. So this is perfectly legal. You can follow this approach. It will work, okay? So whenever you uh, create or reference a new country here, then you will be able to use all of these new fields as if they were part of the official World Map Strategy Kit uh, product. And uh, the good news is that whenever you update the World Map Strategy Kit, uh, you uh, will preserve the, those definitions. So this is a very cool approach, although they are not as flexible as using the attrib field, which can hold a very extensive or flexible JSON structure. So for now, we will not use the country station uh, approach and use instead the attrib JSON object or container to store all of our custom fields. So in this case, I'm using this field called resources to store just a number, a plain number for this example, right? When I select a country, and I enter a new amount here and click update. For instance, Brazil. And when I click update, what it's doing is just take a look at the on click event. It's wired to the game logit update button click, right? Um, update button click, what it does is first. It retrieves the country name, the country name from the from the drop down list. Then gets the country object from the world map strategy kit based on that country name, right? Um, this is a safety check, just in case the country name uh, doesn't correspond to any country in world map strategy kit, so it doesn't uh, raise any exemption or error later. Okay, 
it's safe, it's, it's wise to do these kind of checks. Then um, I am storing the text of the input field here in this variable resource value and assign to this country attribute, right? Um, note that this is very flexible um, and easy to use approach because I can't uh, put whatever name here. I don't have to previously define the name of the custom field used in the JSON object. But uh, beware because if you change this when you have already stored any data on your JSON object and you have stored this information in the file, you will have residual uh, data on the file, right? So one way to avoid mistakes due to ty uh, typing errors is to, to create uh, constant defines like this. All right. And uh, whenever you need to use the name for this custom field, right, use this constant. This is a good practice and uh, it's uh, much more preferable to create uh, any sort of magic number or strings that could change over the time, right? So once you, uh, you have uh, this, uh, what I am doing is just check for any label that I had previously added to the map with, uh, with that value, with that uh, resources amount. And in case that uh, the label it doesn't succeed, I just, uh, calling this API of the world map strategy kit as a marker to the text which uh, will create a basic game object with a text uh, mesh uh, component and assign this text to this uh, text mesh component and position this text uh, wherever I want on the map. In this case I'm passing directly the country center, right? Um, the world map strategy kit has several useful functions to add different markers over the map. I can add uh, 2D sprites or uh, 2D text or a 3D object. And finally, the save button. And uh, what I am doing is uh, telling world map strategy kit with this function get countries attributes in JSON format containing all the attributes for all the countries. And uh, this is a blob, uh, can be a big text or a small text, it depends on the number of attributes and, that you are using. And uh, will be just uh, being uh, written to the file, country attributes, right? This is a very generic and useful function that will allow you to simply return all the countries uh, attributes or the country attributes for a specific uh, list of countries, right? And the pretty print uh, parameter will allow you to um, make it so it's more readable, right? Uh, if you pass false, then the, all of the empty space will be uh, removed, right? And the load button does the opposite, right? Okay. So that's it. Um, it's a, a very simple script. And it allows you to do some pretty things, right? like uh, selecting the countries, show some information, uh, set uh, different resources for the uh, selected country, show the country's uh, information attributes here on an over panel, update that information, save and load the information from, from your file. So thank you for watching. I hope you have found this useful for your future game or project. Um, see you in the next video.